So welcome everyone to a Global and Leaders Group. Very excited to see all of you here and also seeing some few uh, participants coming from different horizons. So we have people coming from UK, Australia, USA, China, Italy and France. So today's topic is back to school. We all face have previously a heavy lockdown where we have to change from day one our habits, routines, work environment and of, of course homeschooling. <laughs> so as a parent, teacher, student, have you made it so far for the past few months and mostly are you ready to go back to a certain normal? If yes, what is it? I'm gonna start with Shabnan and uh, Shabnan Mohamed Shafik, sorry about that, and Nicolas uh, Jancic, who recently great, graduated. And uh, I'm gonna ask you this question. So both of you, which one wanna start? I don't mind if you think Go like ahead, Shabnan. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. How was it for you, the lockdown? How is it now? You're back to normal. And, uh, and mostly, are you going to start to go back to school? Or how is the school environment have been telling you uh, and so on? Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. So I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to talk about my experiences definitely in Australia. So as it currently is, I'm, I'm a first year university student and I'm studying uh, the Bachelor of Clinical Sciences at Macquarie University in Sydney at the moment. And um, I guess this year has been a, a very strange year in terms of, I guess, the education system. I'm sure everyone would, would agree with that. It's, it's been a, a challenging year for, for many of us. And and I guess um, I guess the changes in schooling have had their benefits as well as their disadvantages as well. So I I came from I came from Canberra in, in Australia. It's a little far away from Sydney, and and so my family's back there. And and I moved up to Sydney in order to start uh, my university. So in the first few months that I was here, at the beginning of I believe I came at around February, and and I felt very homesick to leave my family family and it's a new I guess environment new people and university is also uh, very different from high school and I'm, I'm sure you're aware and so in, in the first few months um, our classes were and this was before at around maybe February and March I guess before um, I guess the outbreaks began to occur particularly in Australia um, so in those first few months I found that things are quite normal we had our lectures we had our tutorials our practicals they were I guess we were very close together and, and of course no social distancing it was just very normal and within our lectures because in the clinical science uh, degree we have to look at I guess how we deal with these sorts of issues and, and working within a clinical setting and in a hospital so we discussed the coronavirus a lot and the COVID-19 I guess uh, pandemic but at that stage it was something that we discussed you know in context of what is happening in, in say China or in the countries around China, not I guess exactly what was happening in Australia. I think it was something that we still felt was something that wasn't affecting us and it, it really wasn't in your mind that this is something that could tomorrow affect you so much. So it, I guess in, in that stage it, it didn't seem like, like such a big deal and then at around towards the end of, of March of, of this year we got a I, I guess a, a strange email from our vice chancellor who said that in just two days we would be shutting everything down and we would have all our learning going online and that came as a huge shock I think students were coming into class and they were going oh my gosh what's going on and because we were worried too because we had our practical tests all these exams booked just for the next week and we were wondering well how are we going to do this so it took us quite some time to get to use to that and, and to, to, I guess, um, try and, uh, I guess, understand and, and cope with what was happening. And I think a lot of lecturers and educators and tutors, they also face this issue. I guess it was something no one uh, would predict would happen. I guess um, in terms of that situation to speak uh, for myself, I felt, I, I guess it was a really, really difficult and, and, and uh, I guess, terrible situation. But in, in my case, I found that 
I could actually travel back to Canberra because everything was online and and I found that was fortunate in that I could be with my family again for a number of months so that was I guess a, a benefit in that circumstance. And, and I guess there's, it's, it's often, I guess, two sides. There's some students that I've come across that really love online learning and, and doing, um, and, and learning via Zoom and, and Microsoft Teams and the other video conferencing tools. And, and then there's other students that, that absolutely dislike it. They, they find that it's just not for them. And I, I would find, I, I say, I'm more of the individuals that, that would like it, I guess. I, I think I enjoy it more so for many of the similar reasons that other people do in that you're at the comfort of your own home you're in i guess uh, i'm sure it as as many other countries can relate the transport Transportation issues in Sydney can be uh, can be quite large in that it takes you hours to travel from places. So I guess online learning means that you don't have to travel for so long, and and it reduces a lot of those those hours as well spent there out on the road and getting ready. I think a lot of students find that that's a lot better for them. So I guess there's there's those advantages in that you're at the comfort of your own home. You have access to, I guess, your kitchen very easily. You can go and get a drink or make some food. Absolutely. Um, but I guess it's it's more complex than that. That as I'm sure you'd agree, in that there are quite a few disadvantages associated with online learning as well. And and I guess one uh, I guess one of the big disadvantages that students have come and told uh, and talked to me about is the issue of distractions and procrastination and that when you're at home you don't have anyone I guess watching you and and uh, I guess your your assignments aren't invigilated you can get distracted you can go into YouTube it's very easy for you to get distracted with your family how was it for you well. by and the I way how was it for you the distractions <laughs> <laughs> the distraction for myself. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I guess it, it, the distractions, they, they do occur. I'm certainly not immune to them. I find that, you know, I might just, um, I, sometimes you might be, say, on YouTube and you're watching a, a video for an assignment and then it comes up on the recommended something that is interesting as well. You click on it and then the, the process of procrastination just begins. And I think, um, I, I guess it's been all right in that I, I've tried to make sure that I'm, I'm aware of what's happening but sometimes they can slip and, and, and you find that I'm sure that's something that, that many students experience as well. So yeah, I, I guess it's been all right, but I, I could do better in that definitely. Yes. And, and how I is it now? That... How is it now in terms of, are you going back mm -hmm. to school or what the your university have said about that? What's the new structure, I would say? What's the new normal in some, somehow? Sure, right. So, so at the moment, um, we've just started our new session, so session two, where I'm, I'm back in Sydney at the moment. And uh, I guess there's quite a few changes that have occurred in that we've actually, we have, because um, it, I guess it depends on, on the units you're doing and the degrees that you're doing. In the degree I'm doing in particular, there's a lot of practical units involved where we might go into the practical labs to look at the cadavers or the specimens and because of that I guess a lot of the the lecturers and the tutors they really tried as hard as they can to um, I guess allow for some on-campus lessons as well but what it is at the moment is that all our lectures are completely online so there's no lectures in person of course that lecture halls they they fill up with a lot of people it's just uh, I guess not the best thing at this moment in time but in terms of our tutorials most are online except for I guess there's a few subjects that are more I guess practical based that are a, a, a little more complex and they I guess they um, require more of the face-to-face -face, um, speaking and teaching they're, they're occurring face-to-face -face. but in these classes we're asked to wear masks as well even so there are still a number of students that that don't wear masks um, but but there are a number that do as well and we okay. have to sit separated from each other so about the 1.5 meter distance as well and and we have some practical classes where we're in the labs but again we have to wear our masks all the time and we have to stand apart from one another so yeah I guess it is getting back to normal more mm -hmm. normal than what it was and it was fully online but Definitely. not completely normal yeah not completely <laughs> normal than, than what it once was thank there. you <laughs> Thank you, Shannon. Nick, uh, I know it's quite early in your side. I know you have to go to work. You recently graduated from, uh, from school. We'd like to hear your, yeah. your feedback. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm Nick Ganchuk. 
Um, I just graduated in this past May with a bachelor's in mechanical engineering um, in Bozeman, Montana. And um, the outbreak kind of happened mid-semester, which was kind of a pretty big shock to everybody because midterms were going on. Um, my senior capstone and everyone's final projects were going on at the same time. Um, so that kind of threw a huge wrench into everyone's plans. Um, my group in particular, um, we were designing our project and we had everything built and ready to go. And the rug kind of got swept out from under us and we, we couldn't test it. We couldn't finish it at all. We just had to turn it in as it was. So it was kind of a huge disappointment for everybody in our mechanical engineering department. Um, and we just kind of scooted on out with our degrees as quick as as quickly as we could. Um, the last two months of school were completely online. And um, like she said that it's some people like it, some people didn't. I didn't like it. Um, I, I like structure and being at home and being kind of studying at home all day, watching the online lectures, it's kind of hard for a lot of people to be able to follow their schedule and stick to their courses and get their homework done because they're at home and it's, you know, it's like you can kind of do whatever you want there. Uh, whereas when you're on campus, you have to, you actually have to go there and do what you're told. Um, so as far as school goes, it, it's, um, it wasn't too bad. It was just that having that mindset to stay on course and stay on subject and see everything through throughout the rest of the semester so you could get all your work done, um, which was a little tough for me, but we ended up getting everything all, all finished. Um, and then throughout the summer, as the season started getting warmer and warmer, other restrictions started getting lighter and lighter and lighter. And um, now in the workplace, it's a little bit different. Um, you do still have to abide by the six foot rule. Um, you know, you have to sanitize your hands every time you touch a door handle before. And um, you, there's usually a, a clearance lock kind of a, before you walk into a building that you work in. So you have to knock on the door or ring a doorbell and then someone has to come in and let you in so you don't touch any door handles and then you sanitize your hands and then you go in and then you start your work. And then you're still sitting six feet apart from any of us around you wearing a mask all day so you're not breathing anything, any of the, yeah. So you're not breathing COVID, hopefully not everywhere while you're working. Um, yeah, so it's been quite an adjustment, but that would be the new normal, I would say. Yeah. Um, as far as back to school now, I'm not quite sure how it is, um, just because I'm not back in class anymore. But I've I've heard um, mo like a, a fair amount of classes are fully online now, and that a good amount aren't. So there's still students on campus, but noticeably that you like when you drive by campus looks pretty barren. You know. Yeah. There's hand sanitizer stations everywhere. You know, there's not nearly as many kids. You know, it's just kind of not the same as, you know, you see all these happy freshmen coming in. All these kids wait, like, they've been waiting to get out of high school and they kind of just have to stay in their dorms and not really do too much. You know, mm -hmm. so it's kind of sad to see. Um, hopefully, things will get better next season. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my take. Yeah, on. it's just a matter of being patient, but you have said quite an inter interesting word and also Shannon like being shocked, starting, nobody <laughs> been expecting being a lockdown and from day one doing home line, home line sorry, uh, homeschooling, changing your project, your, I mean, everything, your exam. And, but at some point, and I believe the school environment have also affected you in missing your friends, uh, and then your exactly. teachers I'm, and so on. Yeah, you start to develop these really good personal relationships with your professors and all the kids in your classes. And then it just kind of makes it a lot harder to talk to everybody and coordinate your projects, you know, because everyone's on a Zoom call and everyone's still new to Zoom. So, you know, one person's off doing something and their phone isn't working, the internet's not working, and then it just kind of makes the process a lot longer. Frustrations. Communication isn't as good. It's yeah. very frustrating. Yeah. All right. That's good to hear that. And 
I know most of the countries have been following the same, uh, I would say, um, regulation in terms of, of course, keeping the distance. Some countries have one meter and a half, some others two and, or three, or whatever it is. And of course, they have to, each location, in terms also of school, but also in terms of uh, business entrepreneurs, environment, works environment, they have to, to put the kind of transparent glass uh, gel that you have to clean your hands, whatever shops that you go, I mean, on a, everywhere that you go. I know that is kind of the, no, the new normal, but I have been talking with mm -hmm. so few people, for them is still kind of too much, really too much, and really keeping them, again, the distance of being normal. So I know some of you are still doing like online, could be like schooling and also for work. Do you still miss having meeting physically your, your friends, colleagues, and so on, and even if you have that distance uh, keeping you away, how, how is it? I mean, I ask everyone here uh, who would like to, to, to answer and, and jump on the, on, on the call. I, I, I can jump on that from a personal and business perspective. Mm -hmm. um, frankly, more importantly, from a personal perspective, uh, my sons are seven and six, so they're in first and second grade. They are in-person school, knock on metal, currently. This is their third week of in-person school. In those grades, typically they had pods of seats. Those seats are now individual seats, similar to, I, I guess, what most of us went through uh, when we went through elementary school, individual seats. Kids wear masks throughout the day. Um, they are separated by green dots, six feet dots, at drop-off and pickup. So each family kind of stands on their own dot before letting them in. Our leadership has been, I mean, it's incredible. It, it's, it's almost miraculous that schools are open in any capacity at this point. And I have not yet seen anything affected socially for my kids. They have developed new friends. They have adapted pretty well to this. Um, I've, I've found most kids, from what my children and what their friends have said, they've, they're the ones that adapt pretty well. It's more their parents that are projecting their nervousness on their kids, which that makes sense. So knock on metal, things have been great personally and we're very fortunate. From a business perspective, it's actually been extremely exciting. There are two kinds of people and businesses in life. The one, most folks, cost, scarcity, panic mindset, this is a time where they're scaling back, not investing. The folks that I work with on a global level they're investing and in, in pivoting like crazy right now. And what I've seen is in the, since COVID, my firm has started working with numerous high education companies, higher education companies, tutoring companies, education nonprofits, private high schools. So these are folks that are investing heavily now because they are leveraging this is the biggest opportunity ever. And these are visionary folks that understand that investing now will not only help them now but for years to come so it's actually been very exciting targeting a certain group of people who understand the investment mindset and are actually not panicking in this they're actually looking at this as an incredible opportunity not only now but really to be the leaders 5 10 20 years from now because they're investing now yeah it's an Thank investment you. of long term not as a short term like most of the people have been thinking unfortunately this way I'm investing now for very like maybe up to a year or something like that. But they forgot that it's not about now. It's about very long term. You have, as you said, been really visionary and I think for not as individual, but as a team again. So everybody can really get into the, get into it. Excellent. Anyone else would like to share his or her opinion? What about you, Cheryl? I know you work into education. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to um, uh, expand on, on Justin's comment is I really think now's the opportunity to um, to reinvent and reimagine what's possible and not be stuck on uh, I, I 
I hope we don't go back to the normal that was there. I hope that we use this opportunity to really engage. Um, by going online, it opens up the opportunity for us to engage across the world with, uh, and so that learning experience can become so much richer. Um, I think that's what we're finding in, I run a high school and it's all about real world learning. It's about connect. We do these field experiences going out and if you're learning physics, let's, uh, let's understand the classroom dynamics of those fundamentals and then let's go talk with somebody who's actually applying those physics in their, in their job. Now we can go anywhere, invite anybody into that classroom as opposed to just having to physically be together. And I think the engagement, it's just how you do it, right? I also think in this pandemic, the other silver lining is, is that people have become so much more familiar with the technology. So, so now it's, it, it's no longer, you know, a, a barrier. It's more of uh, an opportunity. So I'm, we're finding with our kids, yes, they would love to be in person. Um, and certainly high school, uh, the, Social is kind of more important than anything, <laughs> um, but I think that they're also finding it's um, they're excited. They're, we we just started school back for orientation for our new our freshmen coming in, and uh, we did do some uh, in person outside, uh, you know, social distancing. But I think um, the feedback that we've gotten from the first couple of days is uh, everybody, including the parents, are really excited about how how we're able to bring community together. So I like that Justin's here in the same thing. Um, and I think we just need to uh, uh, look at education in a different way. Yes, absolutely. For me, is it's absolutely opened the doors for not cutting, I will say, the boundaries by the distance, but absolutely opened the doors through the technology to talk to anyone like we are here today people for coming from different places in the world. So we can share incredible moments, stories, and so on. So yes, absolutely, absolutely. Safran from UK, how is it? How is it there? I know you have also two kids. I don't know if Safran is listening or is quite... Uh... <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask uh, Nicole, he's here with us. Uh, Nicole, if you prefer. <laughs> yes. Hi, good morning. Uh, it's morning for me. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm really happy to see you and meet you. Um, my name is Cole Baker Bagwell. The Zoom has me classified as like my alias somehow. Uh, it's nice to, nice to see you guys. I'm happy to be here. Um, so... I, I've been listening to all the stories, and uh, I think I can resonate with a little bit of, of each piece, right? It's um, humans are meant to connect with each other, and so that physical connection is something that we all need very, very much. This is kind of my area of specialty from, from what I do with the, in the world. Um, but what I'll also say is that I agree with Cheryl who said, you know, we don't want to go back to the new, to the old normal because I didn't think it was that great, folks. I was, I was telling uh, Sonia and Justin just recently, you know, I used to travel every week, three to four times a week, and I would see this, like people's faces in the top of their, you know, the tops of their heads, their face in their phone. There was nobody interacting with anyone. And I think it was true in schools. It was true in business. It was true on the street corners. It was everywhere. And I think in some ways, COVID has given us this hard reset that humanity needed. It gave us like a kick in the pants to say, hey, remember, connection is important, folks, and you're going to miss each other if you, can't, if you can't be there. And I think in my business, what I've learned is that people, people do miss each other. We miss not being able to shake hands, to hug, to wrap our arm around a shoulder, to be physically in the room. And so... I've noticed over the last, from March until, until now, that people are showing up on calls like these and they are more engaged. They are not multitasking or checking email, most of them, you know. Uh, we, we are suffering from a bit of screen fatigue right now because we're on the screens a lot. But for the most part, people are really engaged and, and I love that. I love that we're paying attention in a different way and I think that to Justin's point, you know, there are businesses that are adapting out there and you have to, if you want to survive. People have to adapt if they want to 
survive and our, our world as it moves forward, and that's true COVID or otherwise. So the people who are learning how to do that are being really successful. I do, my heart does go out to the young people who, especially like you, Nick, who you were in your senior year and you, you know, you got shortchanged a little bit at the end of it, but there's some sort of resilience that you too, uh, younger people will develop as a result of this. And the last comment I'll add is that my son just went back to college too. And he called me the other day and he said, mom, things are going really well, but some of my professors are not that hip on the Zoom. And I feel really bad for them because they're having to learn on the fly, right? These are professors who've been lecturing for 30, 40 years and they're standing in these big lecture halls and they're you know, masters at that, but they have to operate a Zoom call and create a breakout room and everything is crazy. So what that's bringing out in the people who are on the other side, like my son and his, his classmates, bringing out a sense of compassion that's really beautiful you know there we're giving each other more grace we are being more patient we are being kinder to one another because you know your wi-fi might go out or you hit the wrong button or your camera slips and you know there's a pile of dishes behind you so i think it's a very human time and i i just want to wrap up by saying i see i see evidence of humanity rising and it it makes just warms my heart and warms my soul indeed so, indeed <laughs> it's good, it's good because I, I, I felt the same. Well, I have also uh, two young kids, uh, seven and a, and a five. And it's amazing because from day one, it was, I mean, the first week was, was very difficult in terms of changing our routines, working from home. I mean, I'm used to, but for some people, but I would say having kids at home, all day doing behind a computer, doing ho online schooling, uh, following with them, playing with them, being different kind of, I want to say, wearing different jackets. But then at some point, I really enjoy it because I can really spend time, quality time with them. Uh, yes. actually, yesterday, I was saying this to them. It's been six months. Six months we are together. Oh. It's a long, it's been a half year. We are all together. And talking together, spending time together, cooking together, doing everything together. And we have learned so much from each other. And also, it's, we have learned to communicate. We need to communicate in a different ways, have fun and so on. And also, we really engage, as me, as a in terms of business, I talk with so much people because they are at home. Usually they cannot tell you, I'm not at all. Well, you're at all. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation. You tell me what's going on, what, what we can do, how we can help, and so on. And uh, for me, yes, it was absolutely a great journey. And I don't want to go back to what it was before. I really love how is it now. And definitely looking for the new, new mindset. I definitely hope people have understand that. And, uh, and willing to change on a, on a better thinking, better behaviors, uh, more respect, uh, and more. And, uh, and let's see, and uh, again, as Justin said, is not think now, but think really in, in a long term, because we, we have to look also for, not as a human being, but also related to our environment, and really help each other to, to have a better, a better life, definitely. Well, Cole just summed up uh, higher ed and like higher ed's main issue in, in one quick statement. I'm so glad. So biggest problem I've experienced with higher ed and so many of the people I know is that it's being taught by professors who've never had to adapt. They've been in a comfy ivory tower job for, it's a job, for decades without really knowing what's going on. And this will make two things. This, will, this experience will make those professors better. Two, more importantly, the ones or the colleges that cannot adapt to this, they're going to go out of business and you will see a new revolution of, of the higher educational system. So it's very exciting to see, see what will happen in that regard. So thanks for bringing up professors having a problem with Zoom because that's figure it out or, or you, you can't. So it's pretty simple. Yeah, it's a, it's a learning process for, for everybody, <laughs> a different level and different scale, absolutely. In terms of professor, we have here, uh, Gerard from uh, Abu Dhabi, who is also a school director. <laughs> Would you like to come up and, and share your, your feedback? Let's 
think he's left. I don't know if he's still here. Yeah, he's here. No, I think he left. He left. Sorry about that. So I'm going to ask uh, Maxime, who's also a student from France. Uh, how was your journey and how was it now? I will say mostly, how was it now? I think Maxime is also frozen. I don't know if you can hear us. Okay, so I'm going to ask um, Safran, father of two kids, also running your own business. Do you love the new changes? Yeah, good morning, afternoon, and evening to everybody around the globe. Um, Sonia, thank you very much for allowing me to come and meet with beautiful uh, people around the globe. Um, children of three, um, daughter 18, and then two boys 15 and 10. Um, and when everything went into lockdown, in the, in the UK here, everything happened uh, around March time, middle of March, about around 21st, 23rd. And when everything went into the lockdown and everything came home, my work, you know, from face-to-face -face meetings all came into, in, in, into the virtual world and the schools coming uh, and, and colleges coming home as well. So it, it was a challenging time, especially because I've never done homeschooling. And you know, bear in mind, when you have you know, three children, spread of age, daughter's 18 at college, so she's got a year left. She's into the last year. So she's okay. She can get on with her work online. But typical teenage guy, you know, 15 year old my son, it was hard to obviously to, you know, to give him because of all of the, the classes came online. Um, so therefore my work's at home as well. So it was kind of, you know, challenging, but we've managed it through. As even though I've been you know, for the last sort of 15 years, I've been working from home. It's been more on face-to-face -face meetings, but then, you know, everything was in the virtual world. So for me, um, pandemic. Um, I know for some it can be like a crisis, like a fear type. For me, it's been a blessing because if it wasn't for pandemic, I don't think I will be sitting here and speaking to you, you know, beautiful uh, people all around the globe. That's the first thing. And then in this, you know, uh, pandemic, I made a lot of connections around the world, which was personal and on business terms as well. So it's been a fantastic um on that uh, on that way and, and and i think a lot of businesses moving forward what justin breen uh, also touched on earlier that it's going to be a great one people are looking for opportunities entrepreneurs this is the you know best platform that you can have and you can start doing business where you probably did it within your country or within your own uh, sort of region now you can push out you know push that out uh, um, all, all around the all around the world and connect with other business people around the world as well so that was the uh, uh, the most blessing side um, if that has happened as a parent now um, especially my 10 year old when the lockdown happened and he was asking we have to wear a mask we have to you know every time we go out come back we have to wash our hands in our, in our sanitizers so that's adjusting to the mindset but now he's back at school yesterday and he's fat and he's already um, fitting well, you know, uh, with the change because before that, you know, we had four to five months in the lockdown ourselves. So spend a lot of time with them. So they got, you know, used to it. They're still there. Okay, they're slightly in, in, um, social distancing apart. But apart from that, he's glad to be back at school, be back with his teachers and back with his, um, you know, friends as well. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's amazing because the past few days I was talking with my kids that next week is school. They're going to start in one week. I said, okay, cool. I'm, uh, I need to buy a new mask. I need to do this. I need to do that. I'm happy to see my friends. They, in terms of, also in terms of in their mindset, they, they understand now they're going to back to school. They also understand they have to keep the distance. And the good thing is the school send in advance a video how kids, they have to behave. So they really understand that point. And for me, I don't have to struggle and to explain it again and again. They are really willing to do that. Happy to go back to school, to see their friends and, and go back to learning. And uh, for me is, again, it's a blessing, blessing time for, for us spending six months together because this never will happen again, definitely. We have learned a lot from each other because if you really look in an aspect of has the back before, we spend maybe like 
three to four hours per day with our child. They live in the morning, come, they come back at night, we have work, we don't know what time we see them. So it's really limited time. We have six months. Good for that. Now is how we see in the future. Let's see. And uh, looking for it, looking for my kids to, to, to go in this uh, new routine, new changes. They have learned a lot. They change their behavior, their, their, their aptitudes. And, uh, and let's have fun. Most important thing is to have fun. And, uh, and that's it. We have Wadzi here. How is it for you, Wadzi? Hi, Sonia. This is Wadzi. I just moved. So I, I'm talking to you from my new house. I am literally just unpacking. So it's been um, the, 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 the coronavirus found me. I had already been ill, I was already at home. My daughter, she came to look after me and then had actually extended her time at home uh, in order to continue staying with me. I live in Rome, she's in the Netherlands. Um, and it was really a great time because we were locked up together. We had to, we had to deal with each other. She's 21, uh, wanted to, you know, see her friends, wanted to go out, but we just, we just, um, we just uh, managed in the same space. Uh, we, we defined our boundaries and our roles. And it was very good for us because we were able, each one would, would, um, uh, would melt down at different times. So I was doing fine until week five of the lockdown, the actual lockdown. And then in week five, I just melted down. I was, I was sick of being home. I couldn't understand what was going on. And so she, she comforted me. And then she had a meltdown in week six. <laughs> and said she wanted to go out with her friends she wanted to be in when was the party happening she, um, and now as we come out of lockdown she's going back to school next week uh in in um, the netherlands they haven't really got a, a, a serious lockdown so she's also concerned that if she goes to the netherlands what happens if there's another lockdown will she be able to come home for christmas so we're dealing with all those um, unknown variables, um, especially for an older child who who thinks that um, you know she she was independent, she was getting on with her life, she was living in her own apartment, uh, and then she was stuck with mom for eight months. You know, so all the all the issues around that, all the issues around how do we do school now? What are we doing? How do we go back? Is it safe? How do we social distance in a class? Um, are most of the class is going to be Zoom. Um, I think the biggest issue was being all Zoomed out. You know, a lot of, a lot of teaching on Zoom. Another issue was, which the professors were dealing with was how to provide exams um, in, a, in a Zoom environment. How do they ensure that uh, the students are invigilated? How do they ensure that the students are okay? So I think in general, lockdown has been positive, but there are moments of psychological trauma that you know people go through these crises and then you come out of it thank you sonia my pleasure it's good to share that it looks like in terms of health you're getting much 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 better and moving to a new place wishing you based things <laughs> excellent uh we have many here would you have any questions to any everyone <laughs> Not really questions, but I wanted to share a couple of Please. interesting observations. Um, so I'm, I'm also involved with an online education company. Uh, and it's been almost six, seven years. And until COVID, we had all the right solutions and you're we trying to sell it to various people and nobody was listening. And in this one day the entire thing changed now everybody in the world wants a solution but you know uh, and so so that's that's an interesting observation that the so-called uh, leading edge uh, you know companies universities schools etc were not at all thinking uh, you know from online preparedness so that was one uh, interesting observation the second, and, and by the way, we dealt with a lot of these issues about you know, how do you how do you give the exam and how do you do this and how do you do 
do that then that also stops so that is one observation uh, second thing we uh, we created i mean we recognized the only place we could count uh, not the only place but the place where we can have the biggest impact was in training the teachers so in the very early uh, days we created a small program to train the teachers and we trained i believe around 20000 20000 or something teachers around the globe for free uh, so so that was one thing uh, you know we got we got involved into uh, and so i think uh, th those are two things everything that that i'm hearing here so it's it's good to see it's not just a local phenomena it's around the world people are feeling the same uh, pain going through the same issues <laughs> Well, so that is, I, I will I say it was a pain uh, for everybody. It was a shock, a frustration. Shocking. Then we moved mm -hmm. to kind of a new normal, a learning process, and uh, and see how it goes. You know, and uh, I believe, I do believe, it will be it will be the new normal, and we have to work with this on the positive uh, aspect. I hope people have changed their mindset to to have a better attitude better behaviors, more respect. They understand uh, more values of that. And, um, and, uh, and let's see how it goes again. You know, and uh, again, as uh, Safran said, it's, it's blessing. Never ever we're gonna have uh, this kind of time uh, to, to, to enjoy that. You know, so I think we have to be very grateful for that. In some point, sorry to, to interrupt you, but it's sad to that, Lots of people have lost uh, people uh, in their lives. But in terms of, um, I would say, we have gathered each other more than ever. This is, this is very unique. So we have to be very grateful of that. Uh, I spend more time talking, some people have never talked for a long time, checking on them, how are you, how is life, how can I help you? And in terms of my business, I talk a lot of, with a lot of people and not here locally, but in terms of worldwide, it's, uh, it's good. I talked to, to, to Shanna, who is in Australia. I have Justin, and I met through again through the, the lockdown <laughs> where we have created this platform. I mean, and look at you, you're all here. What else do we want, you know? And uh, we have to be really grateful for, for, for that and what we have built so far and, and let's see how the future we will come up and uh, and, and, and and that's it that's yeah it. sonia i think you and i i mean i don't want to speak for you but I, I think organically what happens we started this group because like this is this is a teeny tiny little representation of what's going on in the world right now i mean it's <laughs> yeah. again it's really it's like look at look, look at this call <laughs> i mean it's on it's every race creed gender time zone it's awesome uh, you know vertical and we're all in, we're all in this on the same page and it's it's very exciting again to see who adapts and who does not and the people who adapt now are going to dominate now and for years to come and most people will adapt by the way they, they will because yes. they really don't have a choice you have to do it so yeah, um, it's a learning but it, process. It, it, we're at the very early stages of this, and it's really cool to see where it will evolve to. Yeah, we have changed. We have we have grown. Yes, Cheryl. Um, I wanted to ask uh, Manny um, when you talk about training uh, twenty thousand teachers or whatever. What what is the training that you perceive right now in the world that the that educators are needing? That's a tough question. <laughs> So I think, I think the, the team which was involved in training uh, was on multiple aspects. One was how the technology works in, in just simple things. Uh, how do you create rooms? How do you create, how you use different technologies? How do you give assignments? How can you collect assignments? So just, just the basic use of technology. That was one aspect of it. The second aspect was more the difference between the classroom environment and online environment. And, and how the two things will be different and, and how you should go about doing that. So, so those were the two major aspects that we went with. 
and in our uh, in, in that company there are enough people who are sort of you know masters of doing both things people like me are generally useless for those kind of things but so they put together a, a pretty decent program which was very well received uh, and, and and that time we didn't think what else we could do so we just put it for free but the the positive side of this thing has happened is now those teachers are coming back and saying can you create some program for our kids so the entire line of business has come up uh, because of that and it was completely unintended it was more like oh my god this is happening in the world what can we do yes well said that's true new business have been new or i would say a lot of business have just come up from the ground and uh, and also help people whatever they are and uh, it's absolutely booming yes it's absolutely booming that's it that's the new changes it's part of it and we have to adapt and grow with the with the new changes excellent anyone has a question want to say something please feel free feel like home <laughs> I just wanted to add one more thing um, before I scoot. We have the vice president. It's going to be about two doors down from my house. So I have some uh, work to do this morning um, outside in the street. Um, so, but I wanted to just say before I left that, you know, this, this time that we're in is not a pause. It is not like, um, I think I, my clients have told me that, it kind of feels like I'm in limbo right now. You know, I kind of feel stuck. And it's not a pause. I mean, every single morning that we wake up is a, is, is a new chance, right? To reinvent, to live into, to connect, to do all of these things. And I think that um, it is, Sonia, to, to add to your point, it is such a super interesting time. Our, you know, my grandkids, your grandkids um, will ask us one day, like, what was that like when you guys had to wear the mask and you had to wash your hands and you couldn't touch one another? Like, what was that like, right? So I think there's so, so many amazing opportunities that are going to come out of this from a growth standpoint, personally, professionally, um, but then also just lessons in humanity as we move forward. So the mindset, um, the mindset of it's not a dress rehearsal, it's happening right now. Let's get out there and, and live into every day. It's just, it's, it's pretty exciting stuff. And I think um, it will allow us to navigate this with a little more, a little more ease if we can just settle in. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Anyone else would like to say something? I'm going to add to what Nicole said, and I think this is the emerging theme Justin also pointed out. Um, I think for whatever you know, the negative side of COVID, we have been pushed forward by a decade or so uh, in terms of technology adoption and uh, and the new way of working, and and this is going to phenomenally and fundamentally change the landscape of uh, winners and losers. And, and there will be people who will who will gain it, uh, who will, will gain uh, ground like like never before seen. And there will be a lots of pain uh, in the people who lose or they go through the transition period. Those who can't adopt. So uh, I mean, it's very few times I'm lucky to have lived through two of them. One is the introduction of computers. Uh, and now this. Uh, so this is, I, I believe, are the you know, this is going to be a game changer. And the world will not be same, you know, a year or two from now. Doesn't yeah. Matter how you the <laughs> thing is, do you want to have the same? I don't think so. <laughs> no more of it. <laughs> no more. Yes, Safran, you want to say something? Yeah, I mean, in these certainty times, uh, one thing for sure is that everybody is collaborating and everybody is bringing... Uh, the pandemic has got everybody together. So they're looking out for one each other, helping each other. Whereas on the business scale, that never happened before. So may that uh, uh, continue and may that, you know, prosperous into a, another uh, uh, dimension. Absolutely, you said it right. You said it right, yes. 
we realize now we help each other. We built a community, you know, at some point, even having kind of distance, we built a community. It's absolutely true. Great. Anyone wants to say something before we end the session? <laughs> Shamnan, anything else? This session has been so wonderful. I, I think it, and just like so many of us have said, I think it, it's a wonderful time in which we've all come together. I think if it wasn't for these definitely challenging times, I wouldn't have met yourself and then the beautiful individuals here today. And I'm so grateful to have that opportunity. Definitely like in, um, if, if I might say about university and that it's, it can feel a little bit isolating sometimes and that you're not really knowing individuals very well, but I guess even through Zoom, you can at least, uh, like people are brought together and you can speak to them personally in that sense. I guess it's not the same as face to face, but I, I think it's, it's a, a beautiful different time. And I think you're absolutely right in that this is a, a time that we all needed. I think we all needed a shift in, in our thinking. And, and I think we should definitely, when we go out of this situation, however long it takes, I guess it's, it's hard to say now. I think we'll all remember these times and remember how important it is for us to stick together because it's it's only if we stay together and, and that we try and understand each other's issues that we can all get through this hopefully yes and it, it's been wonderful yeah <laughs> absolutely you know it's um many said something is it's like a cycle you know you some people will fall some people will come back and so on and we have to to adapt to create and again just said to dominate and more so it's up all about up to us, sorry, to 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 go with that. How we're gonna move toward this way, and uh, and mostly, mostly to to become better, better respect behaviors, attitudes, and uh, and keep connecting, uh, talking to your friends, and so on. So. Thank you so much for all of you for having you here, coming from different places again, from the world, sharing great uh, conversation and uh, looking forward to see you all. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. Lovely Thank to you. Meet you all. So Until next time, be safe and be lucky.